Hi again, Cavalier fans. I'm Dan Ramey. Time now for the Cavalier Coach's Corner, brought to you by our friends at Young's Family Market, ATI Physical Therapy, Southern Ohio Monument Services, Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing, and the Kingston National Bank. Coming up, we'll meet some of the coaches and the players on the Cavalier Coach's Corner. Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing in Central Center can customize t-shirts, banners, posters, Final lettering for your car, truck, and they can embroider locos for your school or business. It's time to show your team spirit. And from Adina to Zane Trace, Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing has all the team colors. And of course, your Chillicothe Cavalier Blue and White. So stop on into the shop in Central Center and see for yourself. Or visit Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing online and place your order today. Kingston National Bank was founded in 1909 by local businessmen. The concept of a local bank supporting our community's financial needs with local decisions made sense. This is Phil Evans, President and CEO of Kingston National Bank. I invite you to make KNB your bank. We continue to make local decisions that benefit our communities. Experience innovative products and excellent customer service. When you need us most, you can count on KNB. Our community, your bank. Kingston National Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Young's Family Market is family owned and operated. ML Young founded the grocery store in 1936 and now a second generation of Young's, Brad, Susan and their children now operate the business. To also serve the surrounding area, the Young's opened a second location in Kingston, Ohio back in 2014. Making shopping easy by offering everything you need including beer and wine all under one roof. No more running all over town making numerous stops to get everything on your list. Instead, visit our store and find it all. We offer fresh, high quality products for affordable prices. It's the Young's Family Market, serving the Lauraville, Ohio community for more than 60 years. Hi, I'm Angie with ATI Physical Therapy located in Chillicothe. If pain or injury prevent you from doing what you love, let ATI Physical Therapy get you back. Whether it's back to work or back to your play, ATI's energetic and motivating team is ready to help you begin your road to recovery. We will craft a personalized treatment plan incorporating the appropriate techniques for your condition. Stop by our Chillicothe location for a complimentary injury screening or visit ATIPT.com for a location near you. Southern Ohio Monument Company believes remembering a loved one after they're gone can be as personalized as when they were here. With over 400 in-stock monuments to choose from, there are shapes and sizes to match nearly everyone's personality helping your loved one make a lasting impression. Southern Ohio Monument Company on East Main Street in downtown Chillicothe. Open weekdays 8 to 5 and Saturdays 8 to 1. Southern Ohio Monument Company, proud sponsor of the Cavaliers. Welcome to another edition of the Cavalier Coach's Corner. I'm Dan Ramey along with Cavalier Tom and head coach Ron Hinton. A victorious season opener for the Chillicothe Cavaliers over Taze Valley. It came down to the wire, Coach, 14.6 uh, seconds. McKellen Lee punches it in with the go-ahead touchdown. Didn't even need an extra point, winning it 14-13. Well, you know, if, you look, if you look at our history, the last five games have come down to this, this situation. You know, back in 14 when they beat us, okay, um, uh, when they beat us, um, you know, they scored on like the last 30 seconds. Quarterback got loose, ran its quarterback scramble, took off and down, scored, uh, and then uh, was able, not able to do anything with the next offensive series in the last 25 seconds uh, to beat us. Uh, you know, then we went up there two years in a row. Uh, I'm sorry, we went up there, um, and then they came down here. We beat them. We, that's the only time we really soundly beat them in 15. Uh, then 16 and 17, we 16 uh, was a 12-10 game. And they had a chance to kick a field goal at the end and kind of muffed it. To, to beat us by 13-10, uh, and then last year um, it was 31-27 game. All right, so then this year it uh, turns out to be a 14-13 game. All right, um, um, but I, I, I'm so proud of our kids, my staff, um, to go through all the adversities that we went through throughout that game, uh, and we didn't realize we were going to be that outmatched physically. Uh, you know, their front. Their front offensive and defensive fronts played better than what we thought. They were stronger than what we thought. Uh, and, and you know, uh, Coach Arndt talked to our kids tonight uh, at the end of practice about, you know, we got knocked down, um, but you couldn't keep us down. 
you know, and you know, we got right back up and we battled. All right, and and it's so true of what we did, you know, throughout that game. And you think the ebbs and the tides and the highs and the lows, you know, all the different things. But we told them no all week that three things are going to determine the game. Uh, uh, we said number one, uh, number one would be turnovers. Okay, number two would be special teams. All right, number three would be penalties. Okay, and you know, that's one of the few games I've ever won that we did not control the line of scrimmage. Okay, on either side of the ball, they basically, well, I'd say defensively, we're kind of a stalemate with them. Okay, uh, we kind of held our own with their offensive line, but their defensive front really stuffed it. I was shocked at the stats that, you know, we were within 30 yards of them um, of total offense. We were, actually, we ran more plays than they did. And I thought, especially after that, was that one drive was 15, 16 plays, I believe it was, in the third quarter, right, Dan? Yeah. Okay. Um, but their scoring, the first scoring drive was off of a punt that hit one of our players. The they thing. recovered it, and then boom. Yes, we had a breakdown. Play. Yes, we had a so breakdown short, secondary. Short yardage there yes. for their defense. Yes, yes, yes. But, you know, but then the next drive they definitely earned yeah. when they went up 13 to, up, up 13 to 2. Uh, you know, we told the guys at halftime, said, guys, we're only a touchdown and extra point away from being ahead. Mm -hmm. and if we get ahead, they're in trouble. They're in trouble. And they had the momentum swing. Yes. They hit that touchdown after that long drive, 13 to two, and then here comes J.J. Harris, <laughs> and that just changes everything. Correct, correct, correct. You know, and we thought the one we really squandered was the opening drive of the second half. Yeah. The, the, you know, we did, we did not do a good job of managing things going on on the opening drive of the second half. And then after we got the safety, okay, after we got the safety, that that you know we got the ball on the short side of the 50 on the kickoff all right you know and we and we end up getting one or two penalties and something but but we, we kind of squandered a, a golden opportunity there all right all right when it was six to two all right and that's so when they turned right around then and made that long drive that put us down 13 to two mm -hmm. then you turn right around then and you know you know they're up here we're down here they kick off all of a sudden we're up here they're down here because JJ returns at 92 yards, some key blocks. Uh, you know, he broke a couple of tackles there in midfield, and then you know, then you know, and then because we talked to uh, Pick North uh, and Grove City, talked about how fast how their, their speed was, you know, how fast uh, Taze Valley was, and sprinting wise, nobody was in JJ's class. Mm -hmm. Okay, he, when he got out there and turned the corner, it was see ya. All and, right, and if that wouldn't have happened. Uh, you know, you guys had struggled offensively throughout the evening, but at that point, your will could have been squashed. Yes. But JJ's ability to break away about the 38, 40 yard line, and suddenly he's pulling away. Nobody's yes. catching him. Yes. Well, you know, there were some nice blocks in that in that yeah. in that outfit too. So it wasn't all totally just his effort. Now he broke the tackles, kind of broke the tackles at midfield, mm -hmm. but for him to get there, you know, that ball was returned right up the right up the gut. And it was right up the gut, all right? And then he broke it to their sideline, and, uh, you know, I'm glad I was on their sideline. It looked a little better <laughs> running at them, you know? Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, now it's, now it's a 13-8 game. And you know, we went for two. We, we had to go for two. Um, and we didn't quite execute what we wanted. Um, um, we got a little missed. Just, uh, well, we had to call timeout. We wouldn't, you know, because it's supposed to be a, kind of a trick play. And you know, as soon as things are lined up, boom, go. Mm -hmm. All right, but they had a chance then to line up and see it, and they knew something was coming. Um, um, uh, but we still were was you know close game against game inches, but the inches were not on our side. Uh, you know, like I say, hand grenades, horseshoes, and cornhole, and and we were all short on all three. <laughs> all right, uh, uh, you know, you know, and then but then but then um, there was one play. And Coach Arn showed it. Uh, Play number 97 in our in the huddle stuff, and it's a clinic tape on our a drill we do is called pursuit, where the guys around the angles like this chase the guy, you know, getting, you know, and it's a perfect clinic drill. I mean, our, you can see our, our whole 11 guys were moving as a unit, you know, every five yards spaced down the field. I mean, it was amazing. You know, it's it's a clinic tape that we could use forever and ever now. Okay. All right, then, then the great play 
that Chris Postage made on that tackle. I mean, he not only tackled number four, but it, but the end zone shot shows it perfect. You can see Chris tackling him, and you can see his right hand go right in there and yeah. and snap that ball. Mm-hmm. I mean, the kid didn't fumble it. He did not fumble it. It, it is a Chris has got he's kind of got him like on a horse collar, and he's taking him down, and it, it's the same as he's reaching in with his right hand and snaps that ball right out, and McCallum Lee's standing right there, pounce on it right now. Then when our kids ran on the field, you could see a different demeanor yeah. of our football team, especially our quarterback. You could see a totally different demeanor. Of course, again, we do the typical Chillicothe stuff. First play, we lose 12 yards. <laughs> you know, we don't make anything easy. We just maybe we lose, you know, we try to run reverse and kind of catch them, and that kind of goes haywire. And you just needed more room to work. Yes. So, <laughs> so but, but, then, but then the two passes that Adrian did throw, completed to Zach. On the money. On the money. Uh, you know, Zach didn't really follow his blocking. He probably should have scored on the second one, but we'll take what we got. You know, then we ran Adrian four times, uh, twice on what we call a full play right over center, and a two on draws. All right, and then we put in this week, and my staff kind of been yelling at me uh, under center stuff. I said, We don't need it. We're always versus spread, da da da. I said, We need the under center stuff. Well, we lined up under center, and we went to an unbalanced line, and they had no idea how to line up. And that's when McCallum just walks in. Mm-hmm. Okay? All right, so. So you know, you know what what a character character win that was for us. Uh, you know, kudos to my staff, you know, for hanging in there, you know, coach, coaching our kids up, uh, and uh, uh, you know our kids hanging in there. Uh, and, you know, if there's a defining moment in '18, this could have been it, you know, to, to get us over the hump. And the nice neat thing is is that traditionally so far, the team that wins this game has won in, in the playoffs. <laughs> Okay, all right. But I don't, don't see anybody really anybody beating them the rest of the year. I'll be shocked if they do. Yeah. Okay, and you know, not that, you know, I'll be I'll be shocked if shocked if, if they lose a game the next nine games. I'll be really 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 shocked. Um, you know, so so again, the only thing I did really this point was, you know, we did not control the ball. I think our control line scrimmage enough on offensive side of the ball. All right, you know, we we just you know it was a breakdown here, one guy here, a slight thing here, but 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 you know again we we played an outstanding defensive effort. They worked for 365 days to beat us because because I really felt they felt that was a, that was a key game in their season to start off with a win. Mm-hmm. All right, especially against us, and how, especially how we fought, how we won the last three. Yeah. Okay. All right, so. So, you know, so, so that, 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 you know, that, that was just so much. And then so many different kids made key contributions, uh, you know, throughout the game. You know, you know, and you don't realize how young we are. You know, our secondary, you only have one guy back that had really any game experience. That's Jaquan. Everybody else is basically new. All right, you know, up front we got three new guys. All right, because they, they replaced uh, a three-year and a two-year starter in two of those positions. Okay? All right, so... So uh, uh, you know, and Adrian hung in there. He got he got some heat. Uh, he got a little flustered, all right. You know, the, when the first flying uh, and that, but but you know, you know, gosh, look what Jaquan did. I mean, Jaquan had two punts over 50 yards. All right, um, he had the kickoff return. All right, he had the two big runs. All right, um, um, you know, you look look what he did special team wise. Uh, uh, you know, they didn't return. They returned one punt for what eight yards, nine yards, I think it was. I think is all they had there. So, and it put the opposition in difficult field position. Yes. And yes. In, inside their own ten, a couple of times. Yes. And so they had to recreate what they wanted to do. Yes. In some respect. Yes. Um, Adrian Beverly, as you mentioned, he, he was a little flustered, and but he, I think, matured during this game. Probably grew up really quick. And I, I find this interesting, Coach. He was the understudy for three years, basically, at this position. Took it real serious this past off season. He gets his first opportunity, but he doesn't shine until what he was used to playing, coming into the game late. And it seems like inside five minutes, he's your money man. Well, he won our money. Fourteen was pretty much money man in the last three years. So, but not, yeah, but yes, yes, you know. But, but again, you you could just see his, you know, when he when he went to the huddle, it was a different demeanor. Yeah, 
he, he was he was a totally different you know the confidence it was you know, like the and, light came yes, on yes the light came on yeah. exactly exactly so real quick some stats we got to get that get get that in here um, um, Jaquan Harris had five tackles um, uh, Christian Benson again a young man is getting better every week for us uh, at our five technique and outside linebacker um, he had five tackles uh, McKellen Lee at his safety position had seven excuse me eight tackles uh, Joey Wright at one of his better games at seven tackles which is a lot because really the first three scrimmage Joey didn't have hardly any tackles all right so uh, Chris Postage had a great game. Uh, he had uh, nine, 11 tackles. Colin Lindsay had seven tackles. Uh, Pat Roark had uh, let's see five, eight, 11 tackles. Uh, our down tackle, his first start. Uh, Nick Ursuline had 10 tackles. Uh, DeAndre Halbo, we thought played very well for a turning starter, had five tackles. And Corbin Duncan had uh, five tackles. Tackles for loss, we had McKellen Lee with one, Joey Wright, Chris Postage. Colin Lindsay, Pat Rourke had two, Ursuline had one, Duncan had one. Um, sacks, we only, uh, DeAndre Habel had the only quarterback sack for us. Uh, Cause fumble, Jaquan had one, uh, Benson had one, Chris Postage had two. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, uh, fumble coverage, Coates had one, uh, McKellen Lee had one. Uh, Desmond, or excuse me, yeah, Desmond Lewis uh, was our big special team guy. He had four special team tackles. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge, huge for us. Okay, uh, Jaquan forgot to also he blocked an extra point. Right, a key extra point, in which the first, was huge. Yes, was huge. <laughs> yes, he blocked an extra point. Uh, tackle for safety was Benson, Pat Roark, uh, Colin Lindsay, and Chris Postage. Uh, then our players' week defensively was our defensive lineman coach. Coach Arn always puts left. You know, we got eleven starters and he puts seven of the guys on. But, you know, seven guys are players of the week. I mean, come on, Jeff. And these were guys that couldn't tackle yes. the week before. Yes, so so <laughs> our defensive lineman this week was Pat Roark, DeAndre Halbell. Our linebackers was Chris and Nick. Uh, our secondary then was McCallum Lee uh, and, and Joey Wright. And I, I'm not saying they couldn't tackle. It's just Coach wasn't happy. No. That, that was part of what we talked about on last week. We really didn't have the most tackles this week like we've had in the past. Yeah. We really didn't. Um, you know, I think we, we did better in space. And the one, I don't think we really, really allowed them to get in space. Mm -hmm. Like we like we saw on our scrimmage. They not really get in space. Yeah. Okay? And by the way, did you see the score of uh, Berlin, Berlin? No, I did not. They won like 54 to something uh, uh, Friday night. This is the team that we scrimmaged last prior to yes. opening. Yes, yes. So they won, they won their opening game. Yeah. Won, won it big. Okay? Not a senior on the team. No. No. Yeah. You know, uh, now, um, Grove City got beat. Uh, but you know, they played Hilly Davidson was duh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You know, and then, of course, then Willsburg beat Ironton. But so you look at our scrimmages, how well our scrimmage people did mm -hmm. uh, that we went against. All right. And then, um, and then uh, offensively, um, we had uh, um, extra efforts. Uh, Casey Crawford had eight. He's our leading guy with eight. Uh, this is the most pancake blocks, even for much they dominated last scrimmage. We've never had somebody with eight. Extra efforts. And almost all of our guys had two to three to four. You have to have seven to be rewarded, but they had two to three to four, which is a good showing against this great, you know, this defensive front. And then our pancake blocks. Bryce had one. Uh, Ray um, uh, Ray had one. Um, Nick Russell had one. Um, Kyle, Caleb Workman had one. And then Bradley Reinhardt had three. And then Casey Crawford getting back with six. Yes. Big stack. Big stack. Big stack of pancakes. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. So then our, our our offensive line of the week was, of course, Casey Crawford. You know, with eight extra efforts and six pancakes. I don't think that's yeah. yes to be challenged. <laughs> our special teams player was Jaquan Harris. Again, block block extra point. Two punts over 50 yards. They had less than 25 yard average for punts. Uh, then a 92 yard kickoff return. That's a pretty good night. It is a night. Very good night. And our head on in was Casey Crawford uh, and uh, Jaquan Harris, both with the most stickers this week. Uh, Jaquan also had a TD run over four, over uh, over 40 yards. So I mean, you know, so so uh, I don't think people really understand and appreciate how what kind of team we really played. You know how good. I mean, I mean the, that that offensive line. This our guys got pummeled sometimes. I mean, pummeled. And there was one play though that Chris posted almost got like blindside. I mean, he was, that 68 had him rolling backwards and then planted him. 
-hmm. And that big 66 is almost like the longest yard. A couple of times he just puts arm out like this, and ah, our guys got chopped. <laughs> okay, all right. Tree trunks for arms. Yes, yes, yes. You know, uh, uh, but again, you know, we battled. We, we played our football. We played our football. Uh, we battled. We battled. Uh, and kept the game within reason. The thing is, I just, I just, I'm, I'm just scared to death to keep falling down. You know, here we go, it's 14 points again, 13, you know. And then all of a sudden, and then we take off, yeah. uh, you know, with that. So anyhow. Uh, um, and we um, should mention also that Taze Valley helped the effort a little bit because they kept shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, 11 penalties on the night. Uh, they had to use uh, an extra timeout late, you know, that they would have liked to have had so that they could have stopped you before trying to yes. you know, score the winning touchdown. But they couldn't stop the clock. And it just... They found themselves in some unfortunate circumstances right there. Well, it's basically the personal fouls. Yeah. It's basically, it's basically the personal fouls. You know, that, that was really a, a key, key. You know, you know, you know, we didn't, like I said, didn't turn the ball over. We did have a, the bad snaps, the one especially that we, you know, we got, again, the defense stepped right up and shut them down right there. Yeah. All right. And then, of the course, the unfortunate thing with the short punt and the ball bounced into our gunners mm -hmm. going down the field there. So, so, uh, um, uh, you know, I've been thankful, thanking the football gods all weekend. Say thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, all right. Uh, and you'll be one to know again against this kind of football team is 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 really tremendous. Of course, the game didn't end too well for me, but that's you know neither here nor there with, when you with, with that thing. But so that's a first for me on that in 46 years of that that experience. So coach had a health scare at the end of the game, but he he's here and he's fine. Yes. So, so that's well, good news. If I behave so, myself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I hate myself. Which we'll see how we know it's not going to happen. So, <laughs> okay. Um, junior varsity. They had a game this past weekend. Yes. Yes. We went up there and we're basically playing mostly freshmen and a few sophomores. But most are you know are uh, all of our better sophomores are playing Friday nights. Okay. Like Ray Byers didn't play. Uh, a couple. I, know, I forget somebody else didn't play. Uh, but basically, the, our freshman team, some of our sophomores, only had I think three juniors. Played against their junior, junior sophomore team. Um, we lost 33 nothing. Um, then you know they're they're more well prepared than what we are right now. Uh, but our kids got a chance to play, and and, and uh, you know we'll get better. We'll get better. Our junior high lost last week to Logan. I think it's like 35 or 36 nothing. Uh, like uh, they played on last Thursday and lost. Uh, our videos had a uh, had their preview here Saturday uh, all day. It was like 20 some teams here. Yeah. Uh, playing during and throughout the whole day, so you know football uh, is up and running at CHS. You know the Cavs are gone, uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm just you know I also I gotta say I was so pleased with our crowd at the end of the game, our student body. Um, uh, you know how they hung with us. You know and they didn't leave. You know they were right there. Uh, the excitement after the game was amazing. Uh, you know all those things. So. So our culture is really, really changing. Uh, one and zero start for our Chillicothe Cavaliers, and they will have Mifflin next. We'll talk about that coming up in just a bit. But first, a visit with Mike Barron. He's the athletic director for Chillicothe High School. Young's Family Market is family owned and operated. ML Young founded the grocery store in 1936, and now a second generation of Young's, Brad, Susan, and their children now operate the business. To also serve the surrounding area, the Young's opened a second location in Kingston, Ohio back in 2014, making shopping easy by offering everything you need, including beer and wine, all under one roof. No more running all over town making numerous stops to get everything on your list. Instead, visit our store and find it all. We offer fresh, high-quality products for affordable prices. It's the Young's Family Market, serving the Lauraville, Ohio community for more than 60 years. Hi, I'm Angie with ATI Physical Therapy, located in Chillicothe. If pain or injury prevent you from doing what you love, let ATI Physical Therapy get you back. Whether it's back to work or back to your play, ATI's energetic and motivating team is ready to help you begin your road to recovery. We will craft a personalized treatment plan incorporating the appropriate techniques for your condition. Stop by our Chillicothe location for a complimentary injury screening or visit ATIPT.com for a location near you. Southern Ohio Monument Company believes remembering a loved one after they're gone can be as personalized as when they were here. 
With over 400 in-stock monuments to choose from, there are shapes and sizes to match nearly everyone's personality, helping your loved one make a lasting impression. Southern Ohio Monument Company on East Main Street in downtown Chillicothe. Open weekdays 8 to 5 and Saturdays 8 to 1. Southern Ohio Monument Company, proud sponsor of the Cavaliers. Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing in Central Center can customize T-shirts, banners, posters, vinyl lettering for your car or truck, and they can embroider logos for your school or business. It's time to show your team's spirit. And from Adina to Zane Trace, Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing has all all the team colors, and of course, your Chillicothe Cavalier Blue and White. So stop on into the shop in Central Center and see for yourself. Or visit Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing online and place your order today. On this segment of the Cavalier Coaches Corner, we visit with Mike Barron. He's the athletic director for Chillicothe High School. Uh, year number three for you? Year number four. Four? Seems like just yesterday that you started to doing all the shuffling of, of all the game scheduling and hiring officials and everything. Right. I followed this this uh, senior class up the last four years. Yeah. And now this is, I want to talk about that if that's okay, because Mike does a great job of getting the kids into his office sometimes, sitting down, just having talks with them. And I know other athletic directors have done that as well, but you've taken a, a bit of a proactive approach with this because you feel as though this is kind of the the total package when you come to Chillicothe High School. Well, we we believe that part of our job is to prepare these kids for uh, whatever their life is after Chillicothe High School. So I like to, first of all, I like to learn things about our, our kids and then I like to try and help them do whatever their plans are. Uh, we've got we've got a couple kids in an apprenticeship program up in Columbus that uh, they'll become uh, licensed electricians. Of course, we have we have other kids that go on to uh, to college. So anything I can do, I, I like to help them out. Plus, I just like to talk to them. Yeah, and they're interesting kids, and, and kids change over the years. I think in some respects, but still. Just like history, as much as things change, much of it stays the same, doesn't it? It does. Um, you know, you, you run into similar things, but every, every, every kid is different. Every situation is different. And, of course, the times have changed with technology and, uh, um, you know, things that the kids are into now. So that keeps me young. Finding that stuff out. <laughs> uh, visiting with Mike Barron, athletic director for Chillicothe High School, and I, I don't think anybody really knows unless you've been in the position. You probably know because your brother was an athletic director, your father was an athletic director, so you knew what you were getting into when you came to this job as a first-time AD. I did. Um, you know, the the main thing is is I I, I like sports, and I like to watch our kids. Play, I, I I really enjoy that, and and I have to say that there are some sports that I never. I was a football, basketball, baseball guy, and my a couple of my brothers ran track, so all the other sports are new to me. Volleyball, swimming, uh, it's just it's just fun to watch uh, our kids compete. Yeah. Uh, you are in charge of scheduling a lot of these games. Uh, many of them, though, I, I do you let. The coaches come up with some of who they want to play. Sure, we um, of course we have our league schedule each year that uh, the commissioner uh, puts out, and so I have to schedule around that. But I meet with the coaches, and of course uh, we've tried to to uptick our schedule, and and uh, you know when especially the last few years when we've had very competitive teams. We've tried to go out there and play the best in Ohio. It's been a great experience for our, our kids, not only with the competition, but for instance, this year, uh, our basketball team, uh, boys open up in a tournament at Zanesville. We're gonna stay overnight. Our girls are gonna go up to Cleveland. We're gonna stay overnight there. So I try and do stuff like that, that, um, you know, that, that I know that the kids will enjoy. And I think our fans like to see people from around the, the state and see how we, compare athletically. And we've been known to surprise some people when we do that too, uh, coming away with big time victories. We have, and and uh, 
you know, you try and tell our kids that, that on a given night, you know, even if, if we're the favored team, on a given night, anything can happen. And so when we get in the postseason, uh, you know, last year was uh, basketball was a big win against a Columbus school in Tangy. We hosted that game. Uh, we're waiting for the for the soccer teams to break through. You know, we had a little run a couple years ago, but we've moved up divisions, and um, and and we've played. They've started off playing some good teams, so uh, that's to prepare them for the postseason. And Coach McCorkle was really close this past weekend. A uh, 3-2 loss for the boys' soccer team to Bexley. And Bexley is one of those that's tops in the state. And Chillicothe is tops in the state as well. However, they just, like you say, have not broken through that ceiling yet. We'll get there. You know, we, we opened, the boys opened with uh, Hilliard-Davidson, and, and they're a great team as well. But we, we played right with them. The girls have had, um, you know, two tough games. And uh, like you said, it's all about preparing them for the fact schedule, and then a post a postseason run. Yeah, because there are a number of Frontier Athletic Conference titles to defend this year. <laughs> we're the we're the all sports uh, champion from last year. So I've told our kids in the meet the team, everyone's going to be gunning for you. So you got to be on top of your game. We look at uh, already touched on boys soccer. Girls soccer is underway. Tennis is underway. Golf has picked up a win along the way. Uh, a lot of things are really starting to get into motion, cross country as well. Yes, and, and you know, cross country, I'm really happy that our numbers are way up. We have over 30 people in our cross country program now. Uh, our tennis, we have 12 girls playing tennis. Um, you know, those, uh, those teams, the, the numbers are up and the, the numbers breed competition. Uh, so our, our tennis team is up and running. I was with them yesterday up at Thomas Worthington uh, in my stomping grounds. So, you know, Thomas Worthington's got a very good, a very strong tennis team, but it's good for our girls to play competition like that. The golf team has, I, I, I haven't checked this before I came over, but I'll bet you they've won more matches this year than they've won in the last three years combined. combined yeah. Our golf team's doing really well. Uh, Daniel Haller was a uh, medalist just the other day. He, he's medaled twice already this season. Yes, uh, and and we've got some other boys that are playing well, uh, playing a, a good golf as well. Because you know, one person doesn't win the match for you, and we've probably won five or six matches already. Yeah, Mike's one of those hands-on guys. He he will show up at the events. He's got his chair. Usually he has his chair. I caught him at a scrimmage without one this year, but. He'll sit there and watch tennis out at OUC. Uh, you'll, you'll go to whatever the sport it is. You're usually there to check it out. I should have had my chair at the football game last week because Saturday morning I woke up and my back was sore from standing on the <laughs> sideline the whole game. But that was a thriller, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Last week. Yeah. Great start for our football team. The, um, and, of course, we'll be talking more about that uh, coming up. But I want to talk about the event itself because you had to handle a crowd with the new construction going on here. It seems like uh, for the last, uh, since 2013, uh, you come to this facility, the O, you're going to run into some type of construction. I'll just be glad when we, when we get all the construction completed yeah. um, because the parking, you know, we've had to go with the flow on that. And uh, it's really tough to schedule practice times when we've got so many teams using our uh, field. we got people practicing in the outfield of our baseball field down at uh, Mount Logan, uh, they're all over the place just to get some practice time in. Yeah. Uh, so did things go smoothly for the first home football game? I think they did. Uh, great crowd from yeah. from both sides. Taste Valley brought brought a big crowd, but uh, last year, you know, we had we had some issues with our scoreboard. Scoreboard was fine. Um, our people that that are running the video board are doing a great job with ads and instant replays and, and things like that. I think the, the crowd enjoys coming to the games more like a, almost like a college atmosphere here. Yeah, and I'll tell you from a radio side, sometimes it's nice to see that instant replay. If maybe we just didn't get the call, that we do we really see what we thought we saw and then look left and yes we did. Yes. It's good uh, to have. It is. Yeah. Um, as we put a wrap on things, uh, I know that this is the fall season. How close are you to getting spring all ready, figured out, and winter as well? 
Well, most of those schedules are done. I think the, the last one in the winter is always swimming because the athletic directors meet, swimming and bowling, the athletic directors meet for swimming uh, later in the, in the fall. So we've got uh, our feelers out there because, as you know, our swimming uh, program has grown by leaps and bounds. We had a great team last year. So, so again, we're trying to give them uh, good competition and swim in some, some nice pools. And then bowling's the same thing. We meet up at, at Shawnee with all the coaches in the league and do the schedules there. Oh, nice. And you can have pizza while you're there, too. We can. So <laughs> always good to fill that belly. <clears throat> Food is a big part of athletic director meetings and post games, <laughs> pre games, and during the game. Check, I've got to check the concession stand food. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate uh, the job you've been doing, and uh, I guess that brings me around to one final question: uh, Do you have enough volunteers to, to man all of the events that you have to schedule, or do you want to recruit some right now? <laughs> we can we can always use more volunteers because we have so many events and a lot of times we have the same people uh, working those events. Of course, typically those are people who have children playing in uh, sports at Chillicothe. So we like to mix in maybe some alums, maybe some people that are empty nesters out there come back and enjoy uh, watching our kids now so that our parents can, can watch them play. 740-702-CAVS is the phone number, and just look for the athletic department. Yes. Mike Barron, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. We'll return in just a moment and meet a couple of the players on the Cavalier Coaches Corner. Hi, I'm Angie with ATI Physical Therapy, located in Chillicothe. If pain or injury prevent you from doing what you love, let ATI Physical Therapy get you back, whether it's back to work or back to your play. ATI's energetic and motivating team is ready to help you begin your road to recovery. We will craft a personalized treatment plan incorporating the appropriate techniques for your condition. Stop by our Chillicothe location for a complimentary injury screening or visit ATIPT.com for a location near you. Southern Ohio Monument Company believes remembering a loved one after they're gone can be as personalized as when they were here. With over 400 in-stock monuments to choose from, there are shapes and sizes to match nearly everyone's personality, helping your loved one make a lasting impression. Southern Ohio Monument Company on East Main Street in downtown Chillicothe. Open weekdays 8 to 5 and Saturdays 8 to 1. Southern Ohio Monument Company, proud sponsor of the Cavaliers. Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing and Central Center can customize t-shirts, banners, posters, vinyl lettering for your car or truck, and they can embroider logos for your school or business. It's time to show your team spirit. And from Adina to Zane Trace, Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing has all the team colors. And of course, your Chillicothe Cavalier Blue and White. So stop on into the shop in Central Center and see for yourself. Or visit Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing online and place your order today. Kingston National Bank was founded in 1909 by local businessmen. The concept of a local bank supporting our community's financial needs with local decisions made sense. This is Phil Evans, President and CEO of Kingston National Bank. I invite you to make KNB your bank. We continue to make local decisions that benefit our communities. Experience innovative products and excellent customer service. When you need us most, you can count on KNB. Our community, your bank. Kingston National Bank member FDIC Equal Opportunity Lender. Young's Family Market is family owned and operated. ML Young founded the grocery store in 1936 and now a second generation of Young's, Brad, Susan and their children now operate the business. To also serve the surrounding area, the Young's opened a second location in Kingston, Ohio back in 2014, making shopping easy by offering everything you need including beer and wine all under one roof. No more running all over town making numerous stops to get everything on your list. Instead, visit our store and find it all. We offer fresh, high quality products for affordable prices. It's the Young's Family Market, serving the Lauraville, Ohio community for more than 60 years. Here's your favorite moment where we talk with the Cavalier players we have with us tonight, along with Cavalier Tom over here, Zach Coates, and also Nick Ursland. Guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I've told them what your name is. Tell us what positions you play. Um, I'm a wide receiver and a defensive back. Uh, I play the Sam linebacker position and left tackle. Now, for those who don't know, what's a Sam linebacker? 
Uh, basically, I play in what's called the bubble, and it's in between the nose guard and the defensive end, and so my job is to get up into the B-gap, basically, and blow it up. And you've been doing this since your sophomore year? Uh, no, I played outside linebacker my outside. sophomore year, and I got moved my junior year. How has the game changed for you these last couple of years, having some games under your belt? Yeah, well, the experience helps a lot, and um, it just – these last two years have just been so much fun playing it inside linebacker. I couldn't ask for a better two years. Zach, you had an outstanding game week one last year. Yeah. You were targeted, I don't know, maybe 12 times last year. Ten receptions on the night. Um, kind of wished we would, could have repeated history a little bit. Uh, Got to give some props to Taylor Robinson for the tip that he had of what would have been a touchdown pass early on. Yeah, I mean, he has – Pretty good recovering speed. Um, I thought I had him beat, and uh, he did that one time last year too, um, where he just comes out of nowhere and breaks it up. So, and you guys were paired against each other all night because defensively you covered him, right? Yeah, a lot of the time. So, do you build a relationship with a player as that's going on, or um, not a lot of talking went on between us, but um, just kind of an acknowledgement. Uh, mutual acknowledgement between them. Yeah. Because we don't trash talk, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Tongue in cheek there. Uh, <laughs> but but no, the class programs don't do that, right? Okay. We, we wanted to make sure we set the record straight there. Uh, Nick, talk about this defense because the defense, while the offense scored the points to get the win at the end, the defense did its job for field position and to also help special teams, too, in scoring. Yes. Yeah, I think our defense played really well. Um, last year we struggled a lot, so it was great to come out week one this year and and really just we played really well. Um, Coach Art likes to call us the bend but don't break defense, so uh, we really made plays when we had to, but there's also a lot of room for improvement. Our next to, well, third to last, or would it be second to last? Just before Lee scored the touchdown, prior to that was a run by Adrian Beverly. But you had the inside bubble screen and, and managed to get a handful of yards there too. Uh, I thought one more block, you might have been able to score on that pass late. Um, looking at film later, there was actually a different hole there uh, that I could have gotten into um, and got behind my bigger guys. Um, but... Um, I mean, during the game, everything looks a little different. Yeah. Um, everything happens yeah. so fast, doesn't it? Does. It? it does. And, and and it's easy in sitting in game film review to pick it apart. How do you put it all together on the field? Um, you just got to go. Everything's so fast-paced. You kind of just got to do what you've been taught. Um, trust what your coaches have been telling you all summer, and um, just go with your instincts. You guys are down thirteen to two. And first things first, you got the first score on a safety. And while the, the guys who got to the punter in the end zone, he was already down. I, I got a still photo that Luke posted, you can see it on Facebook, that his knee was already down in the end zone. You guys just made sure. So you got your two points there. Now you're, what, less than five minutes left, and you're still down. You, you got to win by 12. How do you come up with those points? Oh, well, first we've got to give credit where credit is due. Jaquan Harris made an amazing play on that kickoff return, sure. and that, that was the turning point of the game for sure. After that, it was it was all positive. It was all, come on, guys, we got to go, we got to go. Uh, let's take this opportunity and win a game. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys had moments where Taze Valley kept stubbing its toe. I mean, 11 penalties mm -hmm. on the night, so it seemed like any time they got some momentum, it, it came back. But you didn't quit. I think that's that's the big thing. You guys just did not quit to give yourself an opportunity. And when it seemed like Adrian was, was struggling at times, and the reason I say that is because as the offense, the offense struggled big time. But you put it together when you needed to. I think that's a good mark, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think that we just, um, I mean, we did it a lot last year. We'd get out to uh, early deficits and just kind of fight back slowly in the game. Um, obviously Friday it was it wasn't very slow. It was pretty quick at the end. Um, but I think 
I don't know if any of us really had the idea of, like, dang, we're going to lose this game. I mean, it was all, um, like, we were just going to fight till the end, no matter what happened. So, Is there something about letting them get a lead and then coming back? And <laughs> I, I mean, do you beat your chest afterwards? <laughs> I, th- I think it's just, uh, again, a, few, a lot of the guys um, haven't had a ton of varsity experience, so I think a lot of it um, is kind of them getting up to speed. Mm-hmm. Um and just getting used to the game as a whole and be, being confident in themselves and what they're doing. Yeah, because half of the guys that are starters now got a lot of playing time last year in the second half mm-hmm. of games because you had huge leads mm-hmm. and the running clock and everything. And But when it's crunch time, all the time, start to finish, it's it's a different pace, isn't it? it? Is. That's right. Yeah. It's full speed all the time. Yeah. You just yeah. got to be ready for anything. 100% every play. Let's, uh, I know we've got nine games to think about and to talk about before we have to really start making decisions, but let's look at your future. Uh, your seniors this year, what are your plans after high school? Good. Um, I plan on going to college and majoring in um, biology on a pre-med track. Um, don't really know where yet, um, but most likely not very close to here. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I will most likely be attending Indiana Wesleyan University and studying nursing, and uh, I like to work with uh, little premature babies. Um, that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, Indiana Wesleyan is actually the number one nursing college in Indiana, so I'm very excited to go. So look for Nick Ursland in the NICU unit, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, okay, that's all right. See, I've learned a few things along the way. <laughs> um, that, that's all great football, but let's talk other sports. I know you like baseball. Uh, what do you do in the wintertime? Um, usually I'll be hitting um, three, four days a week, uh, kind of just depending on what that week has, um, and then lifting usually every other day of the week. Um, this past winter uh, was to most mostly uh, get bigger for football since I'd be um, playing a lot of defense, and I just needed to get bigger. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> This winter will be a lot of baseball. Has that helped your baseball? It has. Yeah. 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 So, um, this summer, um, during summer ball, I had um, a pretty good year, so that helped um, with some recruitment. But I've um, decided to kind of just kind of stick with school. Yeah. So. Hey, and Nick, you're mean and nasty on the mat. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Well, um, as Zach's trying to get bigger, I've been kind of dreading wrestling because I have 25 pounds to lose. To lose? Yes. I need to get back on weight. Um, I beefed up for football, and now i got to lose it again for uh, wrestling. So, But I, I do love wrestling. It's just a great sport. It's just – there's something about getting your hand raised and just knowing, like, looking across the mat and saying, I beat you in a one-on-one that I really like. So That's where he is the man at that point in time, right? Yeah. Um, do you have spring sports that you participate in as well? Um, no, mostly in the spring, I, I like to be outside and fish and do whatever. Because he's put on weight and then took it all off. Yes. It's time to sit back and yes. reward yourself, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, good luck. I know you've got Mifflin this week. That is uh, first time Chillicothe and Mifflin have met in football. Mm-hmm. Uh, why not start the record off one and up? Yeah, let's start with your class. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us tonight, and good luck the rest of the season. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Nick Ursland and Zach Coates. We'll continue in just a moment with Coach Ron Hinton on the Cavalier Coach's Corner. Southern Ohio Monument Company believes remembering a loved one after they're gone can be as personalized as when they were here. With over 400 in-stock monuments to choose from, there are shapes and sizes to match nearly everyone's personality helping your loved one make a lasting impression. Southern Ohio Monument Company on East Main Street in downtown Chillicothe. Open weekdays 8 to 5 and Saturdays 8 to 1. Southern Ohio Monument Company, proud sponsor of the Cavaliers. Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing in Central Center can customize T-shirts, banners, posters, vinyl. Final lettering for your car or truck, and they can embroider logos for your school or business. It's time to show your team spirit. And from Adina to Zane Trace, Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing has all the team colors. And, of course, your Chillicothe Cavalier Blue and White. So stop on into the shop in Central Center and see for yourself. Or visit Chillicothe Signs and Screen Printing online and place your order today. Kingston National Bank was founded in 1909 by local businessmen. 
The concept of a local bank supporting our community's financial needs with local decisions made sense. This is Phil Evans, President and CEO of Kingston National Bank. I invite you to make KNB your bank. We continue to make local decisions that benefit our communities. Experience innovative products and excellent customer service. When you need us most, you can count on KNB. Our community, your bank. Kingston National Bank, member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Young's Family Market is family owned and operated. M.L. Young founded the grocery store in 1936 and now a second generation of Young's, Brad, Susan and their children now operate the business. To also serve the surrounding area, the Young's opened a second location in Kingston, Ohio back in 2014. Making shopping easy by offering everything you need including beer and wine all under one roof. No more running all over town making numerous stops to get everything on your list. Instead, visit our store and find it all. We offer fresh, high-quality products for affordable prices. It's the Young's Family Market, serving the Lauraville, Ohio community for more than 60 years. Hi, I'm Angie with ATI Physical Therapy, located in Chillicothe. If pain or injury prevent you from doing what you love, let ATI Physical Therapy get you back. Whether it's back to work or back to your play, ATI's energetic and motivating team is ready to help you begin your road to recovery. We will craft a personalized treatment plan incorporating the appropriate techniques for your condition. Stop by our Chillicothe location for a complimentary injury screening or visit ATIPT.com for a location near you. Well, this week the Cavaliers, week number two, will take on Columbus Mifflin, the cow punchers. I think they've shortened it to just punchers now, Coach. But um, they had a tough start to the season last week. I think they scored, but lost 55 to 7 if I'm not mistaken um, and I, I'm, I'm just not looking at their opponent I'm just saying hey they had a rough week one compared to what we had what does this Mifflin team present to you that you've seen on game film well, one thing that they lost to Walnut Ridge it was respected program yeah. you know, it was very strong last year uh, Mifflin was 8 and 2 in the playoffs last year but they had, they had a heavy heavy senior class graduation uh, this year we counted 22 kids on the field. I mean, they had they had 11 players and 10 on the sidelines mm. and a couple injured. All right, you know, so so their numbers are are down. Mm -hmm. But again, you're, you, we don't question their athletic ability. Yeah. You know, they have some athletes. Uh, uh, a, a two, especially, we'll talk about here in a little bit. Uh, but it's a different scenario because they're not as disciplined as our scrimmages as, as Taze Valley. You know, they'll kind of they'll, they'll kind of run around a little bit, but they're so good athletically they can make up for it mm -hmm. and used to doing that. You know, and they'll stand there, stand there, and all of a sudden, psh, they take off. Well, do you know, then it's hard, they're hard to catch. I mean, I mean yeah. blocking him or blocking them uh, or trying to execute defense. And defensively, it's going to be hard to read because the linemen tend to stand up. Is a pass, is a run? Do they really come out? And hit you? Not really, okay. All right. So, so it doesn't give us true reads, uh, uh, true reads defensively to do. All right. And then we always talk about 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 uh, uh, Coach Arn always been great about taking care of speed, and we always take care of speed by taking a great athlete and keeping his shoulders north, east, and west, and not north and south. All right. When those great athletes like that get their shoulders north and south, well. See, okay, so we got to keep those guys going, get those shoulders staying east and west, you know, and you know, use Sammy sideline in our pursuit then to bottle, the, bottle them in. Because it's easier to front them when they're like this as opposed to like this going through you. Right. right. They but when, when their shoulders get north and south, they're going, yeah. that goal line's that way, and that's where they're going. Yeah. Look out. Look out. All right, but we keep going this way. Now we have the angles, we have the chance to. So we've always, and we play, we play City League teams uh, many years at Amanda. Uh, you know, we play them here, uh, and and you know we've, that's how we that's how we have, have tried to handle there. Now, I can remember such a couple of situations where pff, we made a mistake and it was 80 yards. <laughs> Bye. See you it later. was done. It was over. Yeah. Okay, we come back and regroup, and all right. Well, two years ago when we played Walnut Ridge, you know, one of the most recent instances. Yes, yes, yes. You know, so so you know, but 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 then you know we'll plan up there, which would be a different environment for our kids. I'll be totally, you know, they're not used to going into, you know, you know, uh, something uh, we didn't talk about last thing, but 
that again, our adversity our kids can't overcame. You know, we're not in school yet. Okay, so we're not in school, right? So, you know, so that and people don't realize how hard that is. You know, when your kids are out of routine. You know, we're gonna play this week. Uh, Columbus City started last last week, uh, last Thursday, um, and you know, and stuff. So they started school the day they played. So they played on Thursday night. We had a, a TV game last week on Thursday night lights. Um, and uh, uh, but they have, they have two exceptional athletes. They have the coach's son, uh, Almond Thornton. Now there is, the coach was a great player at Brookhaven uh, back in the '80s. Anthony Thornton. Anthony Thornton, but you know, played at OU. Yeah. Uh, uh, the head coach, and you know, was a great, great athlete. Well, his son, uh, you know, is a great athlete. Uh, he's a wide receiver, uh, and uh, he made some catches over that we said, "Oh my gosh." Uh, you know, kind of like the quarterback just kind of threw the ball up in the air, and he just out jumped everybody. <laughs> and the film, he looked like he was like six five or six six, like the big kid from Marion Franklin last year. Mm-hmm. But in Parkland, only listen, only listen was six two. All right, uh, uh, so the DBs from uh, Walnut Ridge must have been short, <laughs> <laughs> but he sure out jumped him. Mm-hmm. All right, and, you know, it was a three on one jump ball, but he got him. Yeah. Okay, all right, and then he, then he got a young man uh, by the name of uh, Tavion Scales, a uh, senior. A uh, running back, uh, he's about 200 pounds, uh, um, and he fought last week. He has trouble with uh, cramps and things, uh, but but when he again gets his shoulders thrown from south and he decides he wants to play, he's a handful. I mean he he's a he's a real 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 handful. So they have a lot of two way players uh, on their football team. Mm-hmm. Also, I go back to Thornton. He also punts for him, uh, and he's an exceptional punter. And he kicks off for him, and one of the kickoffs that the two he had in the game after a touchdown and opening, you know, uh, the opening, opening, or I'm sorry, second half kickoff, he put in the end zone. Okay, he he, he put the ball in the end zone. So so he has a strong leg uh, on on in the in those two aspects. And for a lot of Cavalier fans who saw Anthony play here, it sounds like he has all of his father's attributes as well. Yes, he was the same as a player. Yes, yes. The only thing is he he. He's, he doesn't touch the ball every, every snap. Yeah. He doesn't have the people around him that dad had that, that you know, from, from Brookhaven that, right. that, 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 you know, son doesn't have the, 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 the um, chance to play with those kind of, you know, surround himself with those kind of athletes. Mm-hmm. Now, last year, yes. That's last year, yes. Uh, and, uh, um, but, but they, you know, you know, you know they're going to play, uh, but they're going to uh, they're, they're play about eight, eight guys or nine guys both ways. Mm-hmm. All right, because they, they again they only have 22 players, 21 players dress, yeah. so so they so they can't, um, so they don't have a whole lot of room for substitution. Uh, they are big. Uh, one of their tackles is six three three fifteen. The other one's uh, two fifty. Uh, the center is about two eighty. Uh, you know, so they have some big kids. All right, but once again, you know, the play of the city league is is different. You, you know, you have to. We talked about the guy this week. We have to be well disciplined. We have we have to be in our lanes where we're supposed to be. We have to, you know, we have to, you know, read our keys. We have to, you know, because they play a different style of football. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. But they also, if you don't pay attention, you know, boom, they're gone. Yeah. And then defensively, you know, you, you don't block or maintain your block. They get off the block, they can run you down. All right, for you look like it's gonna be a 10, 15 yard game. Well, we only got three or four or five yards. All right. And so, it's easy to underestimate their abilities. Yes. And we've seen that in the past with City League teams that we played with. Because yes. they've got just a little more step or a little more reach, and that can create some havoc for something that if you're going to be like a days ago with the ball, they can turn it the other yes. way. Yes, now, now they struggled last week big time with their quarterback. They played, uh, I think, a junior uh, in the first half. I played a sophomore in the second half. Now they scored with the sophomore quarterback, uh, but he was like, he's like five foot eight, hundred and 35, 130 pounds. Uh, he's not very big, um, um, but you know he threw the ball up into uh, where um, where Thornton could catch the ball. All right, but again, turnovers hurt them. Uh, Brookhaven score, or excuse me, one red scored off an interception, uh, off a fumble, uh, got picked off another one, got good field position, uh, special teams. You know, so so you know they, they scored on in key situations. Uh, you know, with with, with big plays. Uh, so for us, we got you know, we have to go up. Uh, um, you know, we got we got to take care of business. We got to play hard. We got to play smart. All right. You know, we're playing on grass. 
and their grass is a little bit longer. All right, which is going to slow both teams down, but they don't look too slow when they're playing in that <laughs> in that grass. Okay, all right. And the stadium look look nice. I never I've never been to Mifflin. All right, all right. And and but the stadium looked nice. All right, and, you know, well kept and you know very good. So, but again, it'll still be a different environment for our kids to go into. Uh, good thing for our kids to learn mm -hmm. and see. All right, you know the different parts of life that you know people live with and that they have. You know they they do and and. So it's good for our kids to go in there. Uh, we'll hopefully, we'll take a strong contingent from Jill Coffee to to Mifflin, uh, and uh, um, you know, it, it would be tremendous to go open up the season two and zero. Uh, again, we're you know we're, we're both playoff teams from last year. I believe they won a game last year in the in the, round, in the first round. Uh, we were fortunate we're not. So we're both eight and two teams. Um, um, but uh, um, you know you know we just got to get up here you know and. Play great special teams, tackle well in space, get numbers around the ball. All right, you know, and, and again, our best defense is going to be us lining up, controlling, controlling the offensive line. All right, controlling the line of scrimmage and run the ball. All right, and then you know throw the ball when we need to 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 score. You know to move the chains. All right, keep them honest. All right, and then and then, and then keep their athletes on playing defense. All right, play defense. And you know, and and stuff. So so you know, they can't score a whole lot when you're playing defense. Yeah. You don't have the ball. Uh, this is the first meeting between Chillicothe and Mifflin on the gridiron, and uh, coach made reference to uh, Brookhaven a couple of times there. And uh, I shared this on the radio last Friday night after the Taze Valley game. Uh, from what I understand, now if you recall, we played Brookhaven in 2013 in the playoffs. That was the last football game played at their stadium as Brookhaven. They closed the doors after that school year. And from what I understand, most of the kids that went to Brookhaven go to Mifflin. Mm -hmm. So it, there's good reason to remember Brookhaven because that heritage still lives a little correct. bit. Correct. Correct. Respect, correct. So. Correct. Correct. You know, and so, so uh, um, um, you, know, you know, we've got to, again, discipline, execution, all right, physicality. We've got to be more physical then. They play more of a finesse game, you know, physical game. They're they're more of a finesse game, uh, and uh, uh, and we got and we can't allow the big plays. Yeah. If we can do those things, and then then you know we're we're going to be right there, all right, all right, and uh, um, and hopefully that we grew up a lot from the win over Taze Valley. Uh, again, they've got a long ways to come because losing the way they did last week to uh, to a really a rival in Walnut Ridge. Um, um, it, it's tough, tough for them. Uh, uh, and then I know that uh, today when we're filming, uh, Columbus City will let out early, and none of the, out, none of the outdoor teams are allowed to practice. That's what we was mm -hmm. told on the on the TV and radio that they don't, or all practices were canceled. And it's happened twice this week. So, so I mean, they didn't practice Tuesday. Yeah. Okay, a you know, key day and key day in your preparation. Mm -hmm. Now that maybe that may be good. They may come out and just. Play like like gangbusters. Be real fresh. Be real fresh. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, so uh, you know, knock on wood. You know, we're still healthy. Mm -hmm. All right. You know, other than we fought a little bit of cramps with uh, Jaquan uh, and and uh, Zach Coach last week. You know, we we, we stayed healthy. All right. Uh, and uh, in a real physical game, uh, you know, that game was two heavyweights not playing just slugfest. You know, just two heavyweights standing there just throwing throwing punches at each other. All night, just just you know who's left standing at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So now this week will be more of, of a finesse game. This is going to be you know, you know where 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 we can drive the ball, drive the ball, drive the ball. But they can go play, play, play. Boom, gone. Okay, all right. So 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 that, that's way we got we got to work on it. Uh, they play like a three four. All right, and it's kind of odd. Their middle guard's in a real squatty position. He jumps around. Uh, um, their tackles are the ends are big. They don't move. But again, the the scales kid uh, and and the and the Thornton kid make up for that behind of them. All right, uh, and uh, uh, so we just gotta get our guys get our guys in situations and then and then this just, just out execute them, out discipline them, and out work them. Okay. Columbus Mifflin. If you don't know where that is, make sure you look at the Google Maps or get a hold of the athletic department. They'll help you find the directions to get to the game. If you can't make it, listen in. 
Uh, Greg Bickham will be having his first Cavalier football broadcast this Friday night, along with Dana Cousins. So looking forward to that on 1490 AM, 92.7 FM, WBEX.com, and worldwide on the iHeartRadio And then app. Sid also broadcasts it for us in his... Yes, CircleVilleTV.com. You'll yes. be able to watch this show, download it for free right there. And uh, you can even buy uh, buy DVDs, is that right? Uh, okay, got got the thumbs up there from Sid. Hey, just don't ask him what happened to the TV show last week. We're yeah, supposed to broadcast a game on TV, we'll ask him what happened on that one there. Technical All right? difficulties <laughs> beyond his control. Well, most beyond his control. Uh, we should also uh, make mention about, uh, we, we failed to mention this last week, and uh, I tell you, the, the folks at CHS, this is the kind of family it is. You've got Mary Montgomery, who is the food services director for Chillicothe City Schools, recently inducted into the CHS Athletic Hall of Fame. And she is giving back, making sure that you guys were fed all summer long, right? Well, she was a program, uh, actually, I borrowed from uh, uh, Renew Sarcosta uh, from uh, Steubenville last year. I was up there watching them practice in the, in the, in the summer. Uh, that all of a sudden they practice over and those guys were eating. I thought, I said, where do you tell us food? I said, what do your parents do? A heck of a job. I said, my parents do that. That school does that. Mm -hmm. So what are you talking about? Well, we have a free lunch program throughout the summer. That we, that they have a traveling lunch and they take meals to kids. And so, so um, we're able to then to piggyback off of that. All right, uh, she's, uh, it's great for her because then she's able to do more things, offer more things and do that. Uh, you know, because of because of the length of time we run it, all right, and then also then the amount of kids that she's feeding. So so then we were able to. Uh, she came in every day during our two days, and she would bring in uh, a prepare a meal, and then leave it for us, all right, to eat. Then in the evening when we were uh, between practices, uh, so it was a great thing, a great thing for our kids. It worked out extremely well. Uh, uh, you know the. Uh, on the broccoli didn't go over real well one day, and something else, you know, the guys were not real big on the broccoli and something else that she had had. They'll appreciate that when they get over. Yes, 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 <laughs> but, they, but they were not big on that. But other than that, um, um, you know, they cleaned up pretty much everything that we, she brought in every day. Uh, so we're very, very say thank you to her, thank you to her staff that prepared that. Uh, the janitor who brings it over to us every, uh, every day, brought it over to us every day when Lee was here, and, and then, of course, then Murph. Uh, and our and our student trainers that you know that had it all prepared for us, we came between practices, so it was really a, a great thing that we had uh, organized and we were able to take advantage of uh, through that. She's really uh, done a great job expanding the food services. Of course, she's famous for Babe, the big blue bus that uh, makes its trips around to the elementaries and uh, certain places around uh, the area during the summer season as well. So thank you to Hall of Famer Mary Montgomery. Well, again, it's the Cavaliers and the Mifflin Punchers this Friday night. Coach, I'm going to miss it, but I'll be thinking about you. Well, it's going to be sad. It's going to be sad. It's going to be sad. You know, first time in nine years, you're going you're gonna to leave us hanging. You know, hope you, you know, you, both be our good luck charm. So I hope they'll come back to bite us. You're not here. You'll support us here. So, Well, the seasons I've been involved with Cavalier football, I, I've managed to miss only two football games. And... One was a win, one was a loss. So it's a 500 record. Let's see if we can bump you above 500. We'll stay in that let's, category. Let's do that. We don't, go, we don't want to go 500 right now. No. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cavaliers and the Cowpunchers this coming Friday night. And again, uh, 1490 AM, 92.7 FM, if you want to listen to it on the radio, if you can't make the trip. For Cavalier Tom and, of course, Coach Ron Hinton, I'm Dan Ramey. And for Sid, back behind the camera, there's only one thing left to say, and that's go, go Cavs! Cavs.